Hello and welcome to Jazz After Dark. How y'all been? Good out there? It's a quick show that we do here wrapped around things that take a little bit longer to explain or some fun things that we like to talk about. So I say grab a drink, come hang out with me. Let's see if we can put some stats together here. This is brought to you today, not by them, but Bardstown Bourbon. Uh, really good. It was one from when we did our little sampling thing. Wrote it down in my bourbon Bible there and saw it at the store. I said, well, give it a try. I've had it before. It's really, really good. Very, very good to be a uh, matter of fact there. So check it out. We get nothing from them if you do buy it. Uh, but you know, maybe they, maybe they send us something. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about like one phrase. They say the market does not repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Where they'll say history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And I want to point that out. I'm going to take a whole lot of data and I'm going to boil it down into really simple slides here so we can look at it and see if you can understand the point that I'm making here because there's a lot going on right now. So let's take a look. Um, this is a repeat for some of you here on this information, but take a look at this. In the gray line back there, we have the average performance of the market since 1945 meaning we've taken the average performance of every single day and just plotted that performance, the rolling performance as we go. And what we've noticed is this year so far, we in the red, it looks pretty much like average. In fact, this whole year, metric after metric has just looked exactly like the average market. Nothing fancy, nothing scary, just right basically on average. In fact, this is a little bit dated, but what happened through the month of September? We did exactly what the average, almost exactly what the average performance is. And all year you could see we've been about average. I think that's really important. We actually had some fun on the closing beat and we showed August. What does it tend to look like during the month? And we said, well, look, this year we're up over 10% year to date or at the time we were. We said, August has a hard time getting going, right? The light blue, it tends to finish kind of negative. Oh no. What happened? And so that was fun. So we carried it forward to September. So what happens in September? And on the closing beat, I said over and over again, nothing happens in September until we get to the second half. And then we tend to see a sell off, right? That's the average performance. That's actually what happened. Really, really cool there. Now, one thing that I would point out is it's not just about performance. So we want to look at the range of the market as well. And so what we're looking at here is the average range, the difference between the high and the low in percentage terms. And so in other words, in January, it's about 6%. On average, you measure the high for the month, the low for the month, and that spread is about 6%. Well, that's interesting. But what's really interesting is in October, we have the wildest spread, 7.1%. And so we go, uh oh, does that mean August is like, OK, whatever, we're getting weak and then September tends to be weaker and then October gets even weaker? Um, no, not necessarily. And we'll cover that here in just a second. So I shared this a long time ago. I want to bring this back up here that one average that we did not hit yet in the market this year is the average pullback from highs to wherever the eventual low is. Did you know that the average pullback in the stock market for a given year is 14.1%? Sometimes more, sometimes less. You can see on the screen, we've had some scary years with financial crises. Uh, we had the uh, COVID decline in here. Here we go, right here, 2020. Um, you can go through the dot-com bust and all kinds of great stuff in there to see that there's certainly been more. The average gain, 12.7%, just looking back 30 years. The average drawdown, 14.1%. The average range for the stock market on a given year is 26.8%. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Like, you mean you're going to wiggle around, then you're going to hit a low, and you're going to hit some high, and that spread is going to be 26.8%? Yeah. That's the average. That's volatility right there. That's what we sign up for when you hope to enjoy those 12.7% returns, right? So really, really interesting. Now, we're talking about really, really short-term performance here, okay? So I'm not saying that the 
war in Israel and that stuff going on and the strikes with the, the uh, automakers and another you know government shutdown issue or do we kick the can down the road? Earning season going on, higher inflation rates, uh, higher interest rates. I'm not saying all of that can't culminate into something that uh, presents that ultimate 14% pullback. What I'm saying is right now in the short term, figure now till the end of the year, we know that the market has already performed on average and there is nothing, no high volatility, the VIX is low. We, we have nothing to suggest that the market's mood, its personality and behavior is just going to change and somehow finish the rest of the year different. Remember, the Israeli war for the moment, the way it stands, does not affect S&P earnings. If this turns into World War III, of course, that's worst possible case scenario. You know what I'm, you know, I'm saying. Eventually, then, yeah, it would have an impact. So if we look through the short term, August, September, hey, it pulled back just like it was supposed to, just like it normally does on average, right? If we look at that, we say, what is the likelihood that October is like a temporary bottom in the market? Not that it takes off to all-time highs or anything, but that it sort of stops the bleeding there. What, what's the probability of that? Well, what's really, really interesting, you can look at, this takes a while to do, but we can look at the S&P and say, when there was a 10% pullback, where did it stop and then register that month? So for example, in uh, January, at one point, there was a 10% pullback and it stopped and therefore started rallying, right? One time. Look over here at October. October, 18 times. In other words, the majority of the time when the stock market pulls back 10%, and we know that it will, it's supposed to, October was the month where that low stopped. So if the market is going to continue to work in average performance like it has, then why would we not suggest that we just saw the bottom or we'll see the bottom in the month of October? Now, October can be wild. The average drawdown pullback in October is about 4.7%. That's more than any other, uh, any other month, as you can clearly see. How does that happen? Like, think about the, the breakdown of that. August is normally weak. September is normally weaker, the weakest month of the year, actually. So we have this sliding market on average, right? Going through, we hit October and we're falling a little bit more and then bottom. Well, we haven't done that quite as much this month. We did fall a little bit, but we've already started to recover. So I'm not saying now is the end of the, uh, you know, the decline, but we know that if we look at October, there's the rest of that selling off. You can even kind of see it there. August sells off, doesn't tend to recover. September sells off, doesn't tend to recover. October sells off, but it tends to recover, right? Kind of cool to look at that, put those pieces together. Now, September is ranked as the worst month of all the months, and we know that because we just went through it and we've, you've seen all those stats. October, 61.5% of the time, it's a positive month. So not always, but on average, it's positive more times than not. And then it gets better as you go through the rest of the year. We could take one last thing here, and we can say, what years are the most like this year? And then if we know that, how did they finish? Right? Not saying that this is what's going to happen, but obviously the dark blue line is this year, just about with a few days missing there. But we can look at the rest of the years. In other words, look at how correlated the rest of these years are. There was a pullback. There was a pullback. There was a pullback, right? There was a rally. Oh, there we go. We got a rally. See, in other words, the day-to-day -day is very, very correlated. Well, we can look at this now and say, well, it's not normal for a positive year to date as of October to erase all of it and then go negative, right? If this very average year continues to be very average, there's no average that says we fall apart and go back to lows. So it's a lot of data. I get that. And it could all be very much wrong, right? There's, in fact, a 39% chance that it could be wrong. However, in the short term, we can really now see the current mood and personality of the market. Imagine if you could see the personality of your wife. What mood is she in? And you knew how to tiptoe the right direction there. <laughs> so 
<laughs> don't do that. Uh, I'm just kidding. Anyways, I hope you enjoy that different way of looking at things here. Some of it was a repeat for a lot of you. This is the stuff I love to focus on. We are financial advisors. We only grow our business if our clients' accounts grow. I love that. In other words, I better have my finger on the pulse of the market consistently. Doesn't mean we change stuff constantly. It just means I need to know whether we need to you know, batten down the hatches or we need to get things going. Of course, I want to grow. I want to grow as much as possible. I love it. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for hanging out with me, and we will see you next time.